Let's review. In just one week, the New York Times sold the Boston Globe for $70 million. This is the same paper the Times bought for $1.1 billion 20 years ago. Also this week, Barry Diller's IAC sold what's left of the now digital-only Newsweek magazine to the publisher of the International Business Times. And the Washington Post was sold to Amazon.com's Jeff Bezos for just $250 million. We know that the online revolution has left many storied media institutions in the dust, but how much has print declined in America? Well, this is familiar. Most of us read a paper every day. A lot less familiar than it used to be only three decades ago. Check out this chart. In 1985, there were about 63 million daily newspapers delivered each day in the U.S. Then, from 2001 to 2011, the number dropped 20% to just 44 million daily papers. So a lot of newspapers, including the Wall Street Journal, have turned to paid digital subscriptions to make money. Here too, newspapers generally have been slow to adapt, especially compared with other forms of media. In 2011, after that steep drop off in print subscribers, newspapers eked out on average just 5% of the revenue from digital. Meanwhile, revenue from ad dollars is also on the decline. Look what happened from 2008 to 2009. Advertising dollars crashed, going from $108 billion globally to less than $90 billion a year later, an 18% drop, and things keep getting worse each year as circulation revenue essentially stays flat. Okay, Charlie, you stay right in the story and call me back. A lost child. That's always news to a city editor. With many local papers dying off, the top national papers have been growing their readerships. So who's left standing? Now for the rest of the story. The Wall Street Journal is on top in terms of print circulation, with an average weekday circulation of 2.4 million as of March 31st, up 12% from a year earlier. The New York Times has 1.2 million weekday readers, up 18% from a year before. While some papers have large digital audiences, the Washington Post, USA Today, and Chicago Tribune in particular are struggling to get a digital foothold. What about magazines? People are buying from newsstands a lot less than they used to. Sales in the U.S. fell 10% in the first half of this year from a year earlier. Subscriptions dropped by just 0.1%. Perhaps it's telling that the top two magazines in the U.S. buy subscription, both publications from the American Association of Retired People. That's the short answer.